Hi guys, welcome to Tailgate Tuesday. I'm your host Tim. Today on the show, I'm going to show you all about the Sloan flush meter, how it operates, and what parts you need to work on that kind of valve. So stick around, we'll get the show right started. And we're back to the show. This is Tailgate Tuesday. I'm your host Tim from Plumbing with Tim. Quick reminder to let you know that I release two new videos a week. One on Saturday for my Plumbing with Tim and the other one on Tuesday as Tailgate Tuesday. So make sure to check out all the videos that you see. Maybe you can learn something. Share it with a friend that might be in the business of getting started in plumbing and knowing how these valves work and what to look for when you're out to try to make a repair. So we're going to start today by unopening the Sloan flush meter valve. This is a complete assembly kit, brand new. Okay, they usually run about $125, but this is the complete kit when it comes to these valves. Everybody sees these valves every time that they go into a restaurant or amusement park or stuff like that. Remember? This is just, this is a valve housing, you know, with the handle and everything else going there. So you guys all see this at one time or another. So I figured it'd be a good idea to show you how this particular thing works. Okay, so the first thing that you're gonna probably wanna have before you even get anywhere involved with this type of valve are the proper kinds of tools. You never wanna work on these nice, pretty, chrome, shiny valves with a regular pair of channel locks because you're gonna chew them up. You don't go into these restaurants and stuff and see them all beat up and stuff unless they've had a uh, crazy plumber or something like that. I always wanna make sure to have a smooth jaw adjustable wrench. So that way you can work on these valves and you're not putting a bunch of scratches and stuff on them. And we can work on this and still keep a customer. You're also gonna wanna have a flat head screwdriver as well as some sort of a rag to catch water so you don't get water all over the floor. Don't forget about the instructions that come with this. This has a full guide of troubleshooting and how the Sloan valve is set up. Whether you're there to do a repair or to do a rough in brand new during the construction of the building. We're going to get started by taking the top of this Sloan flush o -meter off okay by using our adjustable smooth jaw wrench getting it right there on the top of that like so and turning it see that I'm not making any kind of scratches or dents and stuff we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take the cap off of here this is a cover piece that's on our valve housing we're gonna set this aside now we have a cover cap that's on the top of here we're gonna have to be careful and take this thing off stick around I'll show you this is made out of plastic. This is just a cover housing for the products that are inside of here. Nice and easy, back and forth. Let's take and let's pop this piece off. This is just a cover cap. Remember, plastic. Set that aside. What do we see inside of here? Look at them goodies. Got this green guy, and I got a black piece right here. I'm going to explain to you and I'm going to tell you what these parts are called and what they would do. So right here, this black piece is called the diaphragm. Inside of here, you can just kind of pop it out of here. This is the relief valve inside of your Sloan flush meter. You can see how it just has a little piece that goes back and forth and a very, very tiny hole on the top of it. I'm going to set that aside for a second and we're going to take our diaphragm off of here. As you can see, how it's set up. Now there's a special tiny little hole. And if you can see it or not, it's easier to see on the bottom part. This tiny little hole that I'm pointing at right here. All right, you also kind of see it from the top side right there. All right, that right there, I'm gonna show you how that works. Inside your valve housing, you have what's called the lower chamber and the upper chamber, okay? So at any given time, what's going on here, we're gonna go ahead and put our diaphragm and our relief valve in like so. Okay, remember we'd have a cap that sits in here. Now this becomes the upper chamber of water. So when this thing is pressurized and it's full of water like this, this valve works over an automatic pressure system. Okay, coming in water enters the lower chamber 
and it pressurizes the upper and lower chambers. Okay? So at that time, when you go ahead and you flush, push the little handle down, what this handle does, if you look properly, it pushes in and out, just like that. Alright? So that's what's going on inside of this valve. Now when this handle is pulled down to flush, this little pin goes forward and down inside the mechanism takes and pushes the bottom of the relief valve. Alright? See how it does it from the top? It kind of pushes it to the side. Just a little bit. Just a tiny little bit. When that happens, this relief valve is designed to crack open. All right, bringing the water from your lower chamber up into your upper chamber, releasing that pressurized water, and as that goes down into your toilet, this little tiny diaphragm that I showed you on your orifice of your diaphragm, which is located right there, as water comes back up, pressurizes the upper chamber. Everything sits in there like this, which you're not seeing. That water repressurizes the upper chamber of your flushing meter. And at that time, it tells this valve to go ahead and shut off. Sounds like rocket science, but it really isn't. It just works off of pressure and timing. Okay, so inside of anything mechanical, things can fail, wear out. But luckily, Sloan is smart, just like every other company, and made pretty basic, universal um, replacement parts. Now remember, if you are working on this type of valve, if it's a urinal, you want urinal parts. If it's a toilet, you want toilet parts. Okay, so don't combine these. Some can be low flush, some can be high capacity flushes. You don't want to end up putting the wrong part in your, your valve because you're not going to get the performance that you're looking for. Okay, so this is what your valve usually would look like. All right, sitting, you're using the bathroom, and this is what you're looking at with the handle in place, just like this. All right, so let's not forget one of the most important factors on this valve that is. Um, a replaceable part that goes bad quite often, but it's quite easy to uh, go ahead and replace. Uh, right underneath here, where your handle would be, there's a standpipe that goes down and puts the water into the toilet. Right here at this point is your vacuum breaker. Okay, So when you flush the toilet, that water leaves the lower chamber and goes down through, it has to go through this vacuum breaker. Okay. And when water hits that, as you can see, it opens this little rubber vacuum breaker, forcing water to go ahead and go down. That's why when you flush one of these valves, you always hear, it's a pressurized system. And everything has to work accordingly together and in harmony for this thing to be successful. Okay, remember I showed you the flathead screwdriver? Well, this guy is the difference between you having a flood or doing the job properly. Over here, this is the part that goes in the wall. This is our shutoff kind of valve right here. Okay, um, what this actually is, uh, it has a rubber blocker that's in there that's spring-loaded. All right, that way when you flush the toilet, it opens up and allows water to come in and replace the water that's going out and then it springs itself shut well before we work on any of these kind of valves take your flat head screwdriver a lot of times you're going to see a little cap that's here pop that cap off take your flat head screwdriver go in there and just turn that thing clockwise until it's completely off all right at this point you would take and just flush your handle and get rid of all the excess pressure that's inside this valve. At this time, you can go ahead and open up this valve and replace the parts. Now there are a few of the parts that came with this kit uh, that I really didn't show you or get in detail with things. There's some O-rings, there's some friction gaskets, uh, also um, some of the other goodies that come with it. Uh, but we're not really going to get into detail on a complete install and roughing in uh, one of these valves. This is a video just to show you how one of these valves actually works. 
in real time here on Tailgate Tuesday and how you can go about maybe working on one of these valves and being successful. Now always remember to work with safety. Uh, if you need to, there's all kinds of different parts that uh, come to make repairs and stuff. Always make sure that you get something that says closet. Closet is toilet. If you're working on one of these valves and it's for a toilet, get toilet parts. Sloan calls them closet parts or a urinal. Get urinal parts. You don't want to mismatch these and the reason why is because you're not going to get the same performance. You don't forget, everybody knows how to use the smartphone or the computer. You can always go to Sloan.com and there's all kinds of information. You can order parts there. There's tutorials, everything. So make sure not to be an idiot and try to do this stuff without a little bit of knowledge behind you. So I hope this video has helped you out in some way or another. Hey, you know what? I got them all day long. This has been Tailgate Tuesday. I hope you drop down below and subscribe to this channel. And uh, give me a like, a thumbs up, comment down below. Maybe share this with some friends or some of these upcoming plumbers that might be on the market. Until next time, keep plumbing.